So I'm sure that you already know because we've spoken about it quite recently on the channel, but bison are to be reintroduced to Kent this year, like very soon, in the spring of 2022. It's a very exciting project, not least because bison haven't been in the UK for over 6,000 years, but also because in 1922 there was just 54 bison left and that was in zoos. They went completely extinct in the wild. And of course, it's because they're bison. They're Europe's largest land mammals, and they have a very interesting set of behavior and traits, which we'll explore in this video, and we'll get an understanding of why they're ecosystem engineers. I'd just like to say hello and welcome to any new viewers and of course those that have already subscribed here at Leave Curious. We are curious about nature, so if you are to consider subscribing. A concept that we've mentioned previously on the channel is grazing ecology. It's simply how animals interact with the vegetative environment. Some animals rot and rootle in the soils, some twist and tear grasses, while others hook and snap branches from trees. Fundamentally, herbivores halt the succession of vegetation one way or another. And it's this relationship, when both herbivores and plant life are in the right assemblages, can have beneficial and cascading effects across the entire ecosystem. And showcasing these interactions is going to be a key objective of the reintroduction to Kent this year as they are largely absent from large parts of the UK. So how exactly does a bison interact with the environment? Well, bison are known as intermediate grazers, which means they browse on trees and shrubs, and they also graze on grass. These two effects, coupled with the bison's tremendous size, means that they can push through dense vegetation and woodland understories. Creating that structural diversity, opening up areas that allows light to pass through and for other plant life to grow. This is very exciting and for the UK it's very important because there aren't currently any natural sustainable ways of managing woodland. It's the bison strength that is very unique and unlike anything that any current herbivores currently offer. Bison are the best at creating those half wooded, half open areas, sometimes called wood pastures, and it's these landscapes that they feel most at home. Spending two thirds of their day eating and one third of their day resting, a bison, an adult bison, can eat up to 60 kilograms of vegetation in just one day. Now that's an awful lot, and this is why it's very important from a management perspective of a reintroduction that the area is suitable for the number of bison, because otherwise you can have things like overgrazing going on because they eat a lot of food. Another very interesting behavior is known as horning. This is where bison rub their horns or even their big weighty bodies against trees. This is done sometimes as a display of dominance or maybe because they have an itchy bum, but what's actually happening is, is they're rubbing the bark of trees and this kills trees or in some cases pushes them over entirely. Now killing a tree may seem like a bad thing, but it's not, it actually creates more variety within an ecosystem. Standing deadwood is invaluable to woodpeckers and roosting bats, as well as invertebrates and fungus to grow, and the fell trees create new openings and opportunities for new life to flourish. A two year study in Oklahoma found that horning bison targeted smaller trees and shrubs, particularly willow. Now, willow is a very fast growing species, and in this case, the bison ensured that they didn't just grow and take over the entire area. There still would have been the much larger, mature trees left but you would have had these openings and these other opportunities. Bison's ability to graze grass very close to the ground is invaluable in grassland ecosystem, as it allows for other shrubs and flowers to grow in the open spaces. And then in turn, you get new insects and invertebrates using these areas because of the flowers, and then because of the insects, you get birds, and then, and then because of the birds, you get other mammals and animals all interacting. It's the chain reaction. Wallowing is another really cool behavioral trait of bison. It's effectively dust or sand bathing where they roll around in the dirt and they create a depression. And they do this because, well, I mean, to be honest, it's probably just fun to roll around in the dirt. But what's actually happening ecologically is they're allowing space for pioneer plant species to grow, as well as providing opportunities for ground breeding wasps and bees. And sometimes water can collect in these depressions and you get like a little pond forming. Bison dung, bison poo is also tremendously valuable. I mean, not in terms of a monetary sense, I wouldn't start putting it in your back pockets, unless of course you're a dung beetle. Dung beetles and other insects just love the large pats, the large 
foods that bisons do. And around 200 plant species can be found in their dung too. A ready-made sticky ball of potential life that just needs treading down in the dirt and a little bit of rainfall to help it germinate. And it's that cycle of grazing and defecating and trampling across large areas that would have maintained the health of grasslands. Globally, desertification is a huge threat and it's people like Alan Savory whose very interesting TED talk spoke of this important relationship between herbivores and grasslands that have both evolved together for millennia and how it's key to reversing global trends of desertification. However, in the context of the UK, given the country's fragmented nature, the bison will just be used as a wilding tool. It'll be a key player that can bring its unique traits to our landscapes. And in this video, we haven't even touched on the many benefits and opportunities that a bison reintroduction will bring. It's no surprises that in mainland Europe, in places like the Southern Carpathians and in Holland, bison reintroductions are well underway. And there's a lot that the UK can learn from these reintroductions that are already happening in Europe. So please let me know if you have any questions or if you want to know anything more about the bison across Europe. And I mean, you may as well subscribe if you've got this far in the video. And if you're extra curious, you can join the community over on Patreon. YouTube reckons that you want to watch this video next. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Leave curious.